welcome to our live press event to mark the filing uh, in The Hague at the International Criminal Court of a complaint on behalf of the government in exile of East Turkestan. We have filed the complaint with the ICC prosecutor and we are having our press conference today to outline what the complaint concerns and where we hope uh, it will go in the future. We will be coming live from here in The Hague where the complaint has been filed and from uh, Washington DC where the headquarters is of the government in exile. Today is indeed a historic day. It is a historic breakthrough. It is the first time that a case has been filed at the ICC concerning the genocide and crimes against humanity being perpetrated against the Urga and other Turkish peoples. It also marks a tragic moment in history. The well-known Rumchi massacre took place in July at this time in 2009, some 11 years ago when countless civilians were killed and injured, peacefully protesting against the clampdown by the Chinese authorities. It ushered in a series of harsh repressive measures targeting Urgos over the following decade, taking us right up until today. These measures have included mass internments of in excess of a million people, murders, disappearances, torture, and the harrowing accounts of sterilizations and birth control measures. No one has been held accountable, let alone investigated for these offenses. That is a quite breathtaking fact uh, when you consider the scale and the gravity of these international crimes. Today is hopefully a turning of the tide as the ICC can now act to investigate these offenses. I want to, with that, turn over to those in Washington, D.C., at the headquarters of the East Turkestan government in exile and ask to speak first the Prime Minister of the government, Mr. Saleh Hudeya, and he will be followed by the President, Mr. Khulam Yahma, who will speak in Urga and his speech will be provided in English by the Vice President of the government, Mr. Abdullahat Noor. We're transferring over to Washington now, and then we will come back to us here in The Hague. Good morning, everyone. Um, today is a very historic day for us. Um, yesterday, our team of lawyers at The Hague, led by Rodney Dixon QC, submitted a complaint to the Office of the uh, Prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, asking for an investigation to be opened against senior Chinese leaders for genocide and crimes against humanity committed against the Uyghur and other Turkic peoples of East Turkestan. As set out in the complaint for the, uh, to the ICC, crimes against humanity have historically been committed in East Turkestan by Chinese forces since the Qing Dynasty's occupation of East Turkestan in 1884. The bulk of the complaint focuses on, on crimes committed following 2002 when the ICC went into effect and marked the increases in crimes following the Urumqi massacre uh, on Ju from June 5th to uh, I mean, from July uh, 5th to July 7th, 2009. The crimes against the Uyghur, Kazakh, Kyrgyz, and other Turkic peoples of East Turkestan, which should be investigated, include massacres, 
and ethnic cleansing of entire Uyghur villages, according to the uh, testimonies of PLA veterans. These crimes also include the mass internment of over 3 million Uyghur, Kazakh, Kyrgyz, and other Turkic peoples in what China calls vocational training centers, political re-education camps, and counter-terrorism centers, which are in reality concentration camps. In these camps, as survivors of these camps will tell you shortly, detainees are subjected to psychological and physical torture, sexual abuse, including rape, forced starvation, and forced medication. Tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Uyghurs and other Turkic people have been forcibly disappeared with no information uh, on their whereabouts or well-beings. Last week, Adrian Zenz, a senior fellow at the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation, released clear evidence highlighting China's forced sterilization of hundreds of thousands of Uyghur and other Turkic women across East Turkestan. The Chinese government itself claimed that it prevented the illegal births of 3.7 million babies in East Turkestan between 1979 and 2009. Prevent preventing births amongst the population is defined as an act of genocide under the Rome Statute and the UN Genocide Convention of 1948. In a bid to eradicate the future of Uyghur and overall Turkic existence in East Turkestan, the Chinese government is coercing Uyghur and other Turkic women to marry Han Chinese men. On top of that, 500,000 Uyghur and other Turkic children have been forcibly separated from their families and sent to state-run boarding schools and orphanages to be raised as loyal Chinese citizens. And there are numerous credible reports highlighting the attempted suicide of these innocent children. All aspects of Uyghur and Turkic culture, uh, cultural, linguistic, and religious identity has been effectively eroded by the Chinese government. Even cemeteries, historical and cultural sites, books, and architectural designs have been destroyed as China's government seeks to deliberately eradicate any evidence of Uyghur and other Turkic existence in East Turkestan. Between 1964 to 1996, 46 nuclear tests were conducted in East Turkestan, which killed anywhere from 190,000 people to 750,000 people mostly Uyghurs. Furthermore, a conservative minimum estimate of 1.2 million people were exposed to doses, doses of high radiation, uh, high enough to induce leukemia, solid cancers, and fetal damage. These are just a few of the specific acts, against, uh, acts of crimes against humanity, including genocide, which China and its Communist Party has been committing against the people of East Turkestan. A few of the Chinese officials, which we see as clearly responsible for the genocide and other crimes against humanity being conducted in East Turkestan, included Chinese President Xi Jinping, Hu Jintao, uh, current and former Chinese Communist Party secretaries in East Turkestan, including Chen Chongguo, Zhang Chushen, and Wang Luchen. We also asked the ICC to prosecute the puppet governors, including Shohrit Zakir, Nur Bekri, Smail Tilvaldi, and Abdit Abdurshid, who back in 2002, shortly after the September 11 attacks, approved the Chinese government's policy to label all forms of Uyghur and Turkic dissent, including peaceful dissent, as terrorism. Other perpetrators include top officials of the PLA's Western Theater Command and the Bing Tuan, the three million strong Chinese paramilitary force for their role in carrying out massacres across East Turkestan. Again, today is a historic day. Not only is it the 11th anniversary of the 2009 Urumqi massacre, but it also marks the first step in what we hope will be the ultimate liberation of our people. For too long, we have been oppressed by China and its Communist Party, and we have suffered so much that the genocide of our people can be no longer ignored. We are hopeful that the prosecutor will see our claim, will see that our claim has merit and that she will do the right thing and open an investigation into these crimes. Thank you. And now our uh, Vice President, Mr. Ulan Osman, will be giving a statement in Uyghur. Inna Allah wa salam. 
Çarık Türkistan'daki Uyghur, Kazak, Kırgız ve başka Türkiye sanatlarına karşı elip verilip atılan ırkı kırgınçılık ve cinayetle milletimizin müstakillikini yoktu. Kıhtay'ın müstakillikçisi gibi ayelinin kararlılıkının gelip çıkan neticesi yoktu. 1949 yılı Kıhtay'la Şarkı Türkistan'ın işgal peygandı bu yan. Kıhtay'la özünün ırkı kırgınçılık cinayetini atlaş için halkımızda norgun betnamların çapıldı. Yerlik milletçi, eksili inkılapçı, milli bölgünçü, Katarlık, Vietnam'la bile halkımızın Türk'ümle kırgın kılın. 11. sintetör ve kastin ki dünyanın kıyaslı götürülgen e, İslam'a karşı keyfi yaptım kaydılınıp halkımızın mutlak köp sallık noktasının musulman buluştuk alayetlikini nezer tutup hem de halkımızın halkara İslam terörizmine bağlı zoruğa İslam terörizmine bağlı yok dışkı başlıdır. Kıtayla Şarık Türkistan'ın müstakillikinin esli gelişine ciddi sözgörülük bile karış geldiğini Kıtay Devlet Müdafiye Stratejisi'nin naiti enim oturup koyduğum bunu. Bana bu bizden 40-40 yılın kuşuruşumuzun hakik sebebidir. Uyghur tarihçileri Uyghurların 6 yıllık tarihte ilişkiliğini geldiğini şundakla Şarık Türkistan'ın müstakillik tarihinin naiti uzunluğunu bu tarihçi de kıskı müddetlik işgaliyet zamanlarından başta hiç kaçan Kıhtay Fırkı'nın bir parçası bulma kallıkını farklı artılık ıspatlaydı. Şarkı Türkistan 1876 yılında Çin Sılalısı'nın tacavuzu bu kuşuran 8 yıllık oruç dinkiyim, Munkarızlı kuşuru gandı dinkiyim. Tuncu Kıtın Bozum'un Kıhtay Tılı'da yeni çıgıra adep atalgan Yeni Çigra Mühendisi Fırkı'dan Şincan'da atılışkı başlayan bir ülkeyi Şark Türkistan halkı bu isimli bugün küçük itiraf beyanı yok. Jigirmenci Esir işçi de Şark Türkistan halkı şirketin müstakillik cakı alaka. 1933 günücüde 13 günücü Noya Bırdın 34 günücüde 16 günücü Fevral gıcı April gıcı davamlaştan Birinci Cumhuriyet, Kıhtay ve Soğut Armiyesi tarafından Munkarız tılınma. 1949 yılında 13 yılında Noyabr'da 2. katım müstakillik cekalı Şarkı Kırkistan Cumhuriyeti'ni kurdu. 44 yılında. Hem de gümayenin boğunu da, Komünist Kıhtaylar tarafından kurulan bugünkü Cumha Halık Cumhuriyeti'nin yılla avalla Şarkı Türkistan Cumhuriyeti dünyada kilip olan. Oydurup çıkarılan bir ayırmanın tızası bilen yoktuğundan Şarkı Türkistan Cumhuriyeti taraftarları, taraftarları aslında General Polkavuk Pavun Sonpulatoğlu'nun eslimsi kasaslanılanda 49. yılı Ağustos'ta KGB tarafından Moskova döndürüldü. 1949 yılı Öktebr'den başlayıp Şarkı Türkistan'da istila hareketi başlayan Komünist Kıhtay'la 1949 yılı 22. dekabr'da Mustafa Şarkı Türkistan Cumhuriyeti'ni münkarız oldu. 49 yılı Stalin Mavuz'un bir hat yazıp Şarkı Türkistan'daki Kıhtay lokosunun 5 tersen kimi yetmeyle kalıp bu zeminle tez ardı iş kalıp Nopsunun nispetine tez ardak 30 prosenge yetkizmese tutturan mayda kalıtını bildirip kıtaylarını tacavuz gelmanda oldu. Eyni vakit Şarkı Türkistan nopozunun 90 prosentinin köprüleri Türkiye halıklığa bulup bulanın ise de Uygurluğa köpsallıkını gelle etti. İşgaliyet denkin Kıhtay hükümrallıkını kubul kılmadan halkımız reyimsizlik bile bastırıldı. Ürümçü Radyosu'nun 52. yılı 1. yanvardaki dokulatı kırganda 100 jigirme on Kıhtay düşmanı öldürülgü. 54. yılı Mart'taki Yanışı Radyo'nun haberi de Mündak değilgü. Şarkı Türkistan'da 30 bin eksiliğin kılapçı. Yok oldu. Kıhtay Kompartiyesi'nin öz materiallarını itiraf kılınmağın san, 
دستلاب که 500 شتلا بر 150 میلیون شرط ترکستانلا. نتیجه اون زل ما بینده. خطاي حکومت شرط ترکستان دیگه ایوگور و باشک ترکی کالپلانی یوکتش نم. عموم استراتیجی اسلام بر قسم سوده. مستملک شنید و ترکی کردن سیاست مقدم مقدم یال پاید. برمان تاکسیس تاکسیم برای جدی سوال استفاده نمی‌کنم یه مرزشی و اولترانسیا جمهوریت لرنا مستقل بوده شده بله. خطاهای شرکت ترکستان ما مستقل نکردن این تاین کوکش کار شده. بزنن شرکت ترکستان شرکت ترکستان ما بزنن وایلکی این تاین مال. آذر خطاهای بر بالوا بر یول کرده دیگه. هل کلوچ هل کبوب کن مختا. امیریت اقتصادی اقتصادی بهتر نبیشن این تایم میوم. شنا ایتام لشترشون از کره کی بیم کنده ایرانی کارگرچیل و ایوگور و باشک ترکی خلق کارگران انسانیت کارگران جنایت ل. چونگونو شرق ترکستان دکی شرق ترکستان نیش خال کلاشیم به واسطه نتیجه. چون بس خال کرای جمیت نو بلوک ما خال کرای جنایی اشلار سوتو دم بو پاک پلانو اولیش نه تلاب کنیم. Biz yenə Birləşkən Millətlər Təşkilatı Bəxətərlik Kimişi və Umumi Məclisinin əza dövlətlərinə Şərq Türkistan Məclisi Kultər Tıxlıyıb Birləşkən Millətlər Təşkilatı Nizamlarımızda vədə qılınqan Uyğur xalqının hüququnun xoqdaş üçün kirişin tələb qılınır. Biz dünyanın hər qaysi caylarda hökumətlə təşkilatla şəxslərlə bizdən adaletli qolqı gəlpürüşümüzdə و خطاي امدادلرنم شرط کنن شرط کردستان کار کارشی دو کار واتان ارکی کردنشی دو کار جنایت لرگو خاتم کردشی گه یاد دم کردشی نمیت کردیم دنیا من حقیقت میکردم بزنی دیپلماتی اقتصادی و سیاسی جهتون کلا شرط کردستان خلق گه یاد دم کردشی نمیت کردیم Hello, everybody. The genocide and crimes against humanity that are being committed against Uyghurs, Hazards, Turkish, and other Turkic peoples of East Turkestan is a direct result of our nation's loss of independence and subsequent colonization by China. Since China occupied East Turkestan in 1949, it has put numerous labels on our people in order to justify their, their crimes. Originally, they labeled us as counter-revolutionaries, ethnic nationalists, separatists, and slaughtered hundreds of thousands of millions of people. Because of a global anti-Muslim feeling following the September 11 attacks, China began to exploit the fact that the majority of our people in East Turkestan are Muslims and began to label all and any of our people as terrorists in order to justify their brutal international crimes. However, the real reason as to why we are facing genocide is made very clear in China's national defense strategy, which highlights that they want to prevent the independence of East Turkestan, of the creation of East Turkestan. Uyghur, histo Uyghur historians state that Uyghurs have a history of over 6,000 years, and it is well known fact that East Turkestan has a long history of independence and was never a part of China except for a brief period of occupation. 
East Turkestan was invaded by the Manchu Qing Dynasty in 1876. And after eight years of war, East Turkestan was formally occupied and renamed to Xinjiang, meaning the new territory in the Chinese language. We don't recognize this name or refer to our land. In 20th century, the Uyghur, Hazar, Kyrgyz, and other Turkic peoples of East Turkestan declared independence twice. At the East Turkestan Republic, the first, which lasted from November 12, 1933, to April 16, 1934, before being crushed by Chinese and South armies. Again, on November 12, 1944, Uyghurs, Hazards, Kyrgyz, Uzbeks, Tatars, and others joined together to declare independence as the East Turkestan Republic once, once more. It is well known that the East Turkestan Republic existed long before the creation of the present so-called People's Republic of China. Although it was originally reported that they died in a mysterious plane crash, the top leaders of East Turkestan Republic were actually executed in Moscow in August 1949, according to former KGB General Pavel Sadoplato's memoir. In October 1949, the newly established People's Republic of China invaded East Turkestan and overthrew our independent republic on December 22, 1949. In 1949, Stalin put the proportion of Chinese population in East Turkestan at 5% which he encouraged the Chinese Communist Party to raise to 30% through immigration in order to more effectively annex the land. Over 90% of East Turkestan's population at that time was Turkic people, with Uyghurs making up the majority, followed by Kazakhs. The people of East Turkestan who resisted Chinese occupation were brutally suppressed. According to an Urumqi radio report on January 1, 1952, a total of 120,000 enemies of China had been eliminated in East Turkestan. Another report from the same radio station in March 1954 said that 30,000 local counter-revolutionary insurgents were eliminated in East Turkestan, making a total of 100,000 killed within the first five years of China's communist occupation. Over the decades, the Chinese government would implement colonization and a genocidal policies step by step as part of its overall strategy to eradicate the Uyghur and other Turk people's identity from of East Turkestan. With the fall of the Soviet Union and the independence of the Central Asian Republics in 1991, China grew very fearful of East Turkestan independence. Our resource-rich region of East Turkestan has now become a crucial link in China's Belt and Road Initiative, and it's actually vital to China's economic security. It should be clear that the present-day genocide and crimes against humanity, against Uyghur and other Turk people is a direct result of Chinese occupation of East Turkestan.
Thus, we urge the international community, especially the International Criminal Court, to take these facts into consideration. We also urge member states of the Union Security Council and its General Assembly to put the East Turkestan issue on its agenda and work to secure the rights of Uyghur people as promised in the UN Charter. We urge governments, organizations, and individuals across the world to assist us in obtaining justice and ending the genocide and crimes against humanity that Chinese officials are committing against the people of occupied East Turkestan. We hope that the world will see the truth and help the people of East Turkestan by providing us with diplomatic, financial, and political support. Thank you very much. Thank you for the statements from Washington, D.C. We, we are now back in The Hague. I'm going to talk a little bit about the legal case uh, to inform you about what has been filed. Uh, it has been assumed for too long that Chinese officials are completely beyond the reach of the law for, for what is happening in East Turkestan. China is not a signed up member of the ICC, uh, and that is what has fueled this misbelief. The fact is that it's no longer the case that China cannot be investigated for what is happening there. We are now in a position, fortunately, where there is a very clear legal pathway to allow for the ICC to commence its investigations. This is not a novel concept, uh, and I, I must emphasize that it, it is not a way around or circumvention of the law. It, it is very much the law. There is clear case law now, which allows for the ICC to exercise its jurisdiction where part of the offense occurs on a state party of the ICC and then continues, even if it continues, into territory that is not signed up to the ICC. This is under the principle of a continuing offense, which is well known to all of our national jurisdictions, uh, and also more recently to cross-border offenses, where if an element of the offense takes place in one country, but continues into another country, then both countries have jurisdiction over the offense. These concepts have now been incorporated into the law of the ICC, and there can be no doubt that in the present circumstances, as exists in other cases, that the ICC has jurisdiction to investigate the present case. That, that occurs uh, because two countries, Tajikistan and Cambodia, uh, have both signed up to the ICC statute. And within those countries, and many other countries as well, Uyghur persons have been rounded up as part of a, a well-coordinated and concerted campaign to capture people in those countries and force them back into East Turkestan against their will, where many of them, as a result, are then detained and subjected to the offenses that we've heard about so much today. So part of the overall plan to target the Urga and other Turkish peoples is this specific plan to go country by country where, where Uga persons are, to gather them up and bring them back into China. Because part of that is happening in a state party to the ICC statute, the ICC has jurisdiction over what happens there and then what continues thereafter. The evidence shows that this campaign is being done in order to control all Uyghur persons, 
so that they're not outside and arranging and organizing opposition from abroad. But most significantly, the evidence shows that it's being done in order to bring persons back under Chinese control to target them and dilute and destroy them as a group. And it therefore qualifies as both genocide and crimes against humanity for investigation at the ICC. And should there be sufficient evidence, then charges could be looked at for both of those crimes. We are at a very early stage. We are asking through this complaint for an investigation into these allegations to begin. The prosecutor has the power to do that herself. She doesn't have to get a state referral. She doesn't have to go to the Security Council. She can, on the basis of the material provided, go to the judges of the ICC and request to get authority to investigate. And that's what we are urging her to do based on the evidence that we have submitted. Witness testimony, reports, including from the UN, and other material which she should review uh, and which she can add to through her own investigations as well. She can call witnesses to come here to The Hague to give evidence and on that basis proceed to the judges to open an investigation. And should there be sufficient evidence then to look to bring charges and prosecute. It is a very early stage we are at, but a, a very important one because if the prosecution does the correct thing and opens an investigation, she will undoubtedly be sending out a very telling and crystal clear message that these allegations are very serious and they merit investigation. That in and of itself could have the positive spin-off of deterring crimes that are going on at the moment. And the prosecutor certainly has the power to look at all of those in the chain of command, right up to the highest levels. There is no immunity, as the ICC has said, for anyone for crimes committed at the international level over which the ICC has jurisdiction. One of the touchstone principles of the, the Rome Statute is to, to end impunity. This is spelt out in the preamble and runs all the way through the statute and in the evolving jurisprudence of the court. The prosecutor now has an opportunity in this situation to put that into practice and to ensure that this chance is not squandered. We wish to emphasize that the court was established for exactly these kinds of very solemn and serious cases. They will certainly define the ICC's legacy and most significantly breathe life into the noble principle that those who cause harm and suffering to fellow human beings must bear the consequences of their action, namely justice and accountability. I know we're not going to be able to take any questions today because of the fact that this is a virtual press conference, but if there are any questions arising on the legal side of the case, where it is likely to go, those can be sent through by email and we'll certainly address all of those. I just want to round off by saying, as I'm sure many will be thinking, well, what, well what's going to happen next? It's very difficult to specify because there is no timetable that the prosecutor has to abide by it she now has to consider the complaint uh, as expeditiously as possible and decide whether to take the next step of applying to open an investigation. We will certainly be urging her to do that as swiftly as possible, given that the crimes are going on at the moment. Uh, we will be looking on behalf of our clients to meet with the prosecutor, to provide further information and evidence and assistance so that that decision can be taken as soon as possible so that is in effect the next step, that that decision must be considered and taken uh, without further delay. And we are hopeful that the prosecutor will prioritize this case, given the fact that persons are, as we speak, subject to the alleged crimes, and also because those who 
hold power and who are perpetrating those crimes continue to do so without any investigation. I'm now going to, having dealt with the case, hand over to two victim of the uh, concentration camps uh, inside East Turkestan. They're, they're, they are both concentration camp survivors, uh, and they're going to give their accounts to provide a, a example of, of what is happening. Uh, we have submitted a lot of witness testimony. There are, of course, countless reports. We're not able to go to them all today. These will just be two that, that we have but there are many, many more that have been submitted to the ICC prosecutor. Um, firstly, I'm going to call on Mr. Omar Bakali, who's here with us uh, in the, the Hague, who is a concentration camp survivor. He will give a short statement uh, in Uyghur first, uh, and that will be then translated uh, for you uh, so that uh, you can follow it if uh, you are not able to do so in the original language. Uh, Mr. Bikali. Thank you, sir. Asa Harimete Harandarman Mazada Menajan Panasta Bukatri Menam Isma Umar Bikali, Montapos Yetmish Alten Chil, Portan Layev, Chana Sadunia Vakagan, Shkimo Alten Jilcha, Karmada, Zmeta Bolvan, Mili Kemstish, Zmet Tasamate, Marsh Tasamate. Dinni etkat ki hem murgun tansizlik ve adatetli sebeplik Kazakistan köşüke mecbur buldum. Hemen onu öldüm başta. İşkimi o tutunç yıl geçe eğilip tiklep üç balonun dadısı buldum. Annesine ki kıta garajlarını buluşu hem de uygur milleti buluşu sebeplik ta bazı geçe normal ve adli insanlık kimlikli erişenmek, erişenmektik. Bu üç balonun nevrlerini görüşke meneke Dadısı hem buğuları takazakla kütüvatkan bir peyitte Mersh kime o yetkinçili üçüncü ayda Aslanı ekspo münasebeti bilen ürümçüge yığınla bargan. Tomar Karanız Sayar Şerkin'deki muavin direktör kulu sütkün bilen yığından kiyin atanamlı körgülü pıçanla barganda atalmış terbileş namideki en vahşi erven kırınçılık lagırka sekiz ay tutkulumuzda kişen yetkili olup zencelik bağlatma halette nurgun kıyın kısta açarçılık ve en eğer en eğer bir zulümünü baştan keçirdim. Yani hiç kimse onu yapıyor. Hem insanlar köymeyen bu zulümünü baştan keçirdim. Şundakla nurgun insanların bir şey keken bu en eğer insan katılığını çıkan kılmışlarına kuvahçık oldum. Lager'da hiç kimse o yetkin için 6. ayda tüm lager'da insanların kutuğa 7 kilogramlık zencirler silendi. Hem de valla her kıl kıyım kıstaklarına uçurup ikisi öldürüldü. Birisinin ismi Yunus Abdüs. Bersin'in ismi, yani Yolvaz ismi Sarşı Başkanı'nın cihanı oldu, ismini unutudum. 20 madde 20 yaşlar atarafında ve şey kıyın kısaklarını götürüp taşlandı. 9. ayda olsa, kent bilende 4-5 yıl insan bırakın namı olan ürünler ve lagarlarına yetkendi. Aşılık ve cismali zulüm saldı. 80 yaştın, 16 yaş kişi olan insanların hepsi okşaş bu zulümünü çekip atıdı. Artıkan cinayet kılmışları olsa, bana hem başkanı hem de size dödel parçalaştığı oranı olan terörlükle teşkil edilen, Terörlükten kanat astığı ağan, terörlükten teşvikat kıran degende cinayetlerini artıp her ayda 16 yaşında 40 yaş kısmı olan insanların yerin keçide namadan bir törme ve lagalama ülke ekip atıdır. Hem de her bir fermerdeki 30 bin 40 kısmı olan insanların hem üstü yıkla en eğer kıyım kıstaklarına uçurulan ahvalla künde yeni yeni din kırmağıtkan her saha oranlarında işlerden iş hizmetçi, sodiger, adokat, muallim, kesipkar, milyonlar, pensiyonlar adamlar Adamların toktağısız kolu elini lagırlara ekleden eğer kılmışlarına güvatıp vermem. Ama ta hazırlıkça Amerika başlıkındaki Avrupa etkilerinin Birleşken Devletleri Teşkilatı'nın her kıl tanıkıda yiğin lagırlandırıştan başka hiç kandak bile emel hareket edip verilmedi. Hem Uygur kanunu makulamadan bilir mi? Neçim ile insanın hayatı erkeklikte ta hazırlıkça kifirlikte ilgi bulmadı. Ben Kazakistan vatandaşı bulup durup hazırlıkça bu normal insanın hayatı türemeye kelamatı ben. Üç balan bir yer milyon beri dağıtsız ömür sürüşke mecbur. Atanmış tüm kraliyetlerin kurbanı bulup yaşayan vatı ben. Amerika, Amerika'da bir insanın ölümü dünyada kolu kolu kozu kılıyor. Şerkı Türkistan'da tut kolu da kişen közü de karakalıta bilen etkilen neçin mün onunlağın Uygur Kazak yaşlarının içki ülkelerde bir güne hütke alal organlara aylandırıp halkarağın yarı kıramı kıp durup erken 
Organ sonuç kalıvattan yüzyıl yıl orada çıksa hem ekstadi menfaatini birinci olarak koyan memleketine adalet ke köz yumakta hem kastan yumakta kıtay dünyada bakteriye oluşunu açtı. Hem de demokratiye insan hukuk uçurum uçurum dayanılan kaldı. Özünün kançılık bir rezil, saktipes, zalim bir hakimiyet ekilgeni özünün ekstadiyatayına dünyanın aldavatı dur. Bu kılmışlarına her kıl sakta video teşvikatları bilen yüşür vatı dur. Hakikatini vurmalı vatı dur. Bizde Mermelen Katar 5 insan bu kılmışların muhakkak belgende başka eşkanak delil ispat kertüşke biz aciz. Biz bir insan ve sütümüz bilen bu zalim kıtay diktatorluğuğa, tacavuzluğuğa uçuk halde tüvendeki yukurdaki işlerine duvarlık verimiz hem verimem. Tüplü dünya virüs hareketsizlik kağıranda Şarkı Turistan'daki nurgun ölüm yetim hem kırgıntılığa delilleşke amansız. Benim 76 yaşlıkı sağlam dadam hem şu lagırda oturup taşlandı. Normal bir milyonlar akamdım. Belirip Kıyıştırdılgın bir erkeklik hayatını sürüş imkanıyla mehrum kaldı. Şundakla Nurgulan Kazak Uygur kardeşlerimiz bu şart ustanlıkı gördük ki adalet ki iş iş tuş üçün bu yolda kayıtmayman. Hem insanlar düşmanı olan zalim kıta hakimiyetini yoktu. İnsanlar normal hayatta erişim için bu kardeşler yanmayman. Yeni bir varlık mı vermem? Ben halkara sorunum, gagan sorunum bu zulümet ki insanlara gördük ki erişişi insanlık her hukukun kodu şu için yerden de varlıklara bir zulüm 800 buluş sütüm bilen şen ürgümden teşekkürümden ve rahmetini bildirmem. Köpçülük rahmet. We'll, we'll now have the translation of that in English. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Omar Bekali. I was born in Turfans Kichan County in East Turkestan in 1976. I was working in Karamey until 2006. As a result of racial discrimination, employment and wage discrimination, along with numerous other inequalities and injustices, I was forced to move to Kazakhstan. I started my life over again. And until 2014, I was able to uplift myself and father my three children. My children hadn't been able to see their grandmother, however, who, because she was in Uyghur, was unable to obtain even the most basic humane treatment. <coughs> In March 2017, I visited Urumqi for a business meeting in relation to the Astana Expo as the deputy director of the Tomar Trans Tourist Agency. After the meeting, I went to my hometown of Kichan to visit my parents and was detained and locked up in a so-called re-education camp, which was in reality a brutal genocidal concentration camp. For eight months, I had chains weighing around seven kilos um, cuffed to my arms and legs. I faced torture, starvation, and other horrific abuses. Most importantly, I also witnessed numerous people being subject to inhumane treatment and torture. They also had seven kilograms of chains tied to their legs in the camp. All the children were subjected to all kinds of torture, and two were killed. One was Yunus Ablis, the nephew of the police chief, Hunger and physical oppression were suffered by all. People between the ages of 16 to 80 all suffered the same oppression. The increasing crime, uh, the amount of crime increased between the number of people between the ages of 16 and 40. Um, many, I and many others tried to divide ourselves up um, but we were told that we were uh, organized terrorists. I witnessed the night shift, and almost all of the 37 to 40 people in one cell were subjected to the most severe torture from workers, businessmen, lawyers, <laughs> teachers, educators, and anyone really. There were newcomers brought to this torture every day. I testify to the serious acts of unlawful enslavement and incarceration that they suffered. As human beings, we are attempting to stand up against this oppressive Chinese dictatorship, but the international community seems to be turning a blind eye. Everyone is focused on the coronavirus. Countless people in East Turkestan are being left to die. My 76-year-old father, who didn't have any health problems, was murdered in a concentration camp. My older brother went through so much torture that he is no longer a normal man. Out of a family of eight, including my parents, six of us faced brutal oppression in the concentration camps. And this is just one family. 
And because I exposed China's secrets, my father was murdered. So long as I am alive, I will not stop exposing the truth. Hence, we asked the international community, the International Criminal Court, to help us obtain liberation and justice for, our pe for the people of East Turkestan. We have suffered far too long under this oppressive regime. Unfortunately, the United Nations, the European Council, and even the United States have not taken any real actions besides giving warnings and issuing condemnations. Although the Uyghur Act has been passed and signed into law in the United States, it hasn't been able to protect the lives of millions of people, nor preserve their basic rights. Despite now being a citizen of Kazakhstan, I still have not been able to live like a normal human being. The death of one person in the United States shakes up the entire world. However, in East Turkestan, thousands of innocent people are being chained up with bags over their heads and transferred into Chinese provinces and their organs harvested and sold as halal organs. Despite evidence exposing this dark trade, many countries have put their economic interests first and turned a blind eye to this. What is happening to our people is a 21st century genocide. I hope that the International Criminal Court will hear our pleas for justice. We hope the world will hear our pleas to be treated as human beings with equal rights. Our people have suffered for too long and this cannot continue. Thank you. Thank you so much. The second uh, and other victim, uh, Zumret Dawood, uh, is unfortunately not able to join us today. Uh, but she has provided a statement which has been translated into English. Uh, and her statement will now be read out by one of the co-counsel on the legal team uh, that has worked on filing the complaint, Anne Coulon. Uh, she will read out the statement that was provided by Ms. Dubat earlier. Uh, and uh, it is an English translation of it. The, the original is in Uyghur, which we will submit to the court. My name is Zumrat Daoud. I am Urhur from East Turkestan. In March 2018, I was called to a police station and was interrogated about phone calls made to and from my cell phone and about my business transactions regarding my import and export company. I was held in a dark room with my hands and arms cuffed to the chair for 24 hours. Afterwards, I was sent to a concentration camp where I spent 62 days where I faced psychological and physical torture. I was beaten after I gave some of my food to an elderly Uyghur woman who was very ill in my cell. While I was in the concentration camp, I was injected with various unknown drugs. I was released after my husband, who is a Pakistani citizen, pressed Pakistani diplomats and Chinese officials for my release. After my release, I was forced to pay a fine of over $2,500 for violating the family planning policy as I had three kids. In October 2018, I was forcibly sterilized along with hundreds of other Uyghur women. Life in East Turkestan, outside the concentration camps, is extremely oppressive. We had Chinese relatives assigned to us who would sometimes live with us and sleep with us in our homes. My little daughter was assigned an adult Chinese male as a relative, and he tried to take her away to his house. But luckily, after numerous objections, I was able to prevent this. In our phones, the Chinese government requires us to install an app that tracks all of our communications and sends alerts to the police of all our activities. Every week, we were required to go to flag raising ceremonies and we would be graded on our loyalty to the Chinese state and the Communist Party. People who got less than 90 were sent to the concentration camps for re-education. As I stated numerous times before, I genuinely believe that the Chinese government is trying to eradicate us. Tens of thousands of our people have tried to flee the country as a direct result of their persecution. 
I am just one of the very few lucky ones to have managed to leave the country and be alive to share the reality of the situation with the world. There are still millions of Uyghurs, Ratmi, who continue to be locked up in concentration camps. The others have to live with the constant fear of being sent to one, whether they are inside East Turkestan or living abroad. So many who are outside the country have already been captured and forced back against their will. Thus, I again call on the world to help us, to take action and to save our people from being wiped out. I hope that the International Criminal Court will investigate and prosecute the Chinese officials who were responsible for the genocide and crimes against humanity in East Turkestan. I pray and hope that the world will help us obtain justice and liberation from Chinese oppression and occupation. Thank you. Um, Ms. Darwin apologizes again for not being able to join us. That was a reading um, of her statement. Finally, uh, now I'm going to turn over to the Interior Minister of the East Turkestan government in exile. I'm very honored to, to have Mr. Nuramet Kurban with me here in The Hague today to say a few final words, which will then be translated. Den hakten Molaga Otsan ve Ali İkram. Bugün bizden tarihi aparat lanklışlarımızla, masaj kallamızla ve katnaş kallamızla rahmet ediniz. Şerki Türkistan'daki Uyghur ve başka Türkiye halkımızdan bek uzun zamanda ziyan keşitke uçurgallaka hissaçlık kılgallamızla rahmet ediniz. Roni Dixon başlığındaki QC Adukatlar grup yazısındaki Dan Hakkı Halkara Cinayi İşler Mehkimizde Tepiş Mehkimizde bundan etraflık erzi sunallığa rahmet ediniz. Dünyadaki varlık devletlerinin yardım bilen Hıhtay Komünistik Devleti'nin bizge kılgan nurgun cinayetlerinin ahırlışını ümit kılınız ve müstakbel hüvet devletimizde kayta erişimizde inşallah ümit bilen ümit. Thank you everyone for tuning into our historic press conference today and for following the story of the Uyghur and other Turkic peoples of East Turkestan who have been persecuted for too long. Thank you to our legal team, led by Mr. Rodney Dixon QC, um, who have put together such a comprehensive complaint to the prosecutor at the International Criminal Court here in The Hague. We are hopeful that the world is now listening to the plight of East Turkestan's people and that there will be an end to the many crimes committed against us. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. That brings our press event to a close. Uh, as I mentioned before, if there are any follow-up questions or requests for interviews with any of those who've spoken today, those can be sent by the email provided. Uh, and we will respond uh, immediately. Um, unfortunately, a virtual press conference doesn't allow us to have uh, a interaction, but we will certainly follow up any questions that you have and are available to speak further on any of the matters um, that were raised today. Thank you very much for your attendance. <laughs>